Hello everybody, and welcome back to Cam Critiques. A couple of days ago, Jeff Keighley hosted Gamescom's Opening Night Live, one of now three of his annual gaming broadcasts. And, as expected, it was bad. These Jeff Keighley shows focus on the worst parts of the industry and take up far too much time. There is probably no one else on this planet who has wasted more of my life. And yet, each and every time he puts on a show, for years now, I tune in. Every once in a while, there's an announcement that I don't want to miss live. But as the years go on, highlights like the first gameplay of Breath of the Wild get further away. In recent years, his shows have been pretty much entirely uninteresting, and they show no signs of improving. Don't get me wrong, modern Jeff shows aren't totally devoid of worthwhile content. The Game Awards in 2020 had Sephiroth join Smash. Summer Games Fest 2021 had the Elden Ring gameplay reveal. Even this week's show had some neat looking stuff, like the first kind of real trailer for Sonic Frontiers and a gameplay trailer for the surprisingly good looking Lies of P. But the last few years of these shows have probably given me about 5 minutes of worthwhile content each, while their average length is well over 2 hours. And frankly, there were a lot more trailers that actually made me upset than those that excited me at all in Jeff's latest showcase. The show literally opened with a metaverse NFT blockchain mess called Everywhere, and then Jif had the nerve to brag about how green Gamescom was an hour later. There is a trailer for a car. Yes, a car. But not just any car. A car with, and I quote, gaming features. One of the longest trailers was a fully CG teaser for a sequel to Lords of the Fallen. At a game showcase, they brought out Hideo Kojima, to announce a podcast. They teased a big PlayStation announcement that ended up being an overpriced Elite controller. The show was just kind of a mess all around. One thing contributing to that mess was definitely the overabundance of fully CG trailers. The main point of Gamescom, a show about video games, should be to show off video games not cinematics, that are practically unrelated. There are times when I was blindsided by a game's genre after watching a full trailer for it. Who would have guessed that this Dune game was an MMO? And that really goes to show how pointless these CG trailers are. They're a massive waste of the developer's money and my time. I want to see what a game is like, and these CG teasers never actually show me that. I think another big issue for Jeff's shows is the sheer amount of new IPs. Now, on paper, I think new IPs are great, and giving them a big spotlight should be a good thing. But I think Jeff lends companies that spotlight a little earlier than he should. After nearly a decade of watching these shows, I can count the number of ambitious new IPs that have actually materialized on one hand. And the ones that have released so far are far from classics. Are any of you still playing Back for Blood? Yeah, I didn't think so. So, as cool as a game like Where Winds Meet looks, Jeff's track record has stopped me from getting truly excited. Ultimately, Jeff's shows aren't about showcasing what the industry has to offer. They aren't about unveiling exciting new projects. They're about the most cynical advertisements that plague this industry. He'll gladly show off NFT scams, cars that are seemingly designed to distract the driver, and even multiple straight-up Red Bull ads in what is advertised as a game showcase without a second thought if he's paid enough. And I don't want someone like that holding a monopoly on game reveals. With E3 now practically dead, the biggest events are all hosted by him with Summer Games Fest, Gamescom, and the Game Awards. And they're all plagued with the same issues. I leave each and every one disappointed with the state of the industry and sad that I wasted hours of my evening. At this rate, it feels like it won't be long before Jeff finds a way to take over Tokyo Game Show. At least we'll still have Nintendo Directs. But if Jeff continues to wield the power that he has over nearly every major developer for seemingly no reason, my interest in keeping up with this industry will only continue to wane.